CataractCoach.com. Beautiful job for 600 cases. Are you at least this good after the same number of cases? Let's watch a complete case here. Now we sped up the video to 2x normal speed so we can get through it. Here's a fixation ring and let's start off with a paracinesis. I like how you're nicking the limbo vessels. 600 cases is around that halfway mark of the learning curve. And let's watch the case here. This one's actually a pretty good case. Putting in some anesthetic perhaps, such as lidocaine, epinephrine, phenylephrine. Look at that pupil expanding, woo, right in front of your eyes. I like that, that was very effective. Now coming up with our viscoelastic. And there we go, get a good fill there. Looks like a, maybe a cohesive agent, huh? The way it's coming out. Let's watch the main incision now. Fixation ring going down again. Here comes the main incision, hitting those limbo vessels. Tunnel length looks pretty good. Single plane incision. I like it. That little bit of bleeding from the limbo vessels, I love that. It just means the incision heals so beautifully with time. Now, let's see the rexus just with forceps, getting that created pretty nicely here. And looks like it's nicely centered up as well. So in case 600, my advice to you is just to really deep analyze every bit of your surgery, every step, and say, what could I do to make this step even prettier? What could I do to make the rexus better? What could I do for the incision to be better? And just kind of, you know, go through step by step. Now here comes a cannula to do some hydrodissection, a little bit of gentle hydrodissection there. There's a hydrodelineation of the golden ring. And let's see that nucleus, that's probably gonna spin. Yep, there it is, right? You know my saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. That's spinning. You're going to win in this case. Now, a little more viscoelastic to coat the cornea, a little more viscoelastic inside the eye, protect the corneal endothelium. Let's see the phaco probe going and let's see the technique. Are we going to do a chop? And you know, that's my preference, but whatever technique you like, let's take a look. Okay, get that probe back in the eye. And again, this video is 2x normal speed, so that means the video is about maybe 13 minutes, which is very reasonable. Again, it's not a race. Okay, you're going to do a groove down the middle, perhaps a stop and chop, split that nucleus. There we go. But yeah, aspirate those bubbles out. Yeah, for sure. Give yourself a better view. And then once you do that, let's see if you can bring up a half. Maybe chop it, bring it up. There you go. It just comes right down. So this looks like a relatively soft nucleus. Mostly that posterior subcaps are change. And now getting this second hemonuclear piece up. I like the chopper in the safe position. Protecting the caps or bag. That goes nice and easy. So it looks like a younger patient by those eyelashes and PSC category. Maybe like a 50-ish year old patient, which as you know, I consider young. Hmm. <laughs> Didn't always, but now that I've hit that mark, I think it's young. So now coming out of the eye here, that looks really good. Hey, let me tell you about retina rounds. If you're learning surgery, you obviously love to watch these videos. You need to learn about the retina too. And that's why retina rounds is fantastic, even if you're a cataract surgeon like me. I don't do retina surgery, but I, I subscribe and watch retina rounds. And you should too. Now, cleaning up the cortex here. I'll get that air bubble out. Pretty good job keeping the eye in primary for most of the case. I do like that the draping's good. The eye position is good. Patients... Eyes mostly staying in primary. Caps are back. I'd clean up a little bit more. Yep, yeah, I'm glad you put that probe back in the eye. I'd get some of that wispy stuff out too. I agree with you there. And then once that caps are back cleaned up, we'll get the lens inside. So it's a very nice routine case. I mean, this is the beauty of cataract surgery. It is just that much fun. So yeah, polish up that bag a little bit. You can use just a low vacuum setting here. Just be cautious, obviously. So sometimes these patients with these posterior subcapsular cataracts, especially if they're very, you know, opaque PSC cataracts, they can leave some like permanent stains on the capsule. I've had patients where you're just better off just yagging it after a month or two. And so you just don't want to break the bag here. So that looks pretty clean. Viscoelastic going in, maybe you have a polish you can use to help kind of scrub that posterior capsule, or maybe you can do it once you get the eye on the eye. I've even seen surgeons use the edge of the eye oil as it's folded up and being injected, only partially injected in the eye. Use that leading edge to kind of scrape uh, the posterior capsule if you need to, but let's see. Here comes the lens going in. Let's see, we got here a single piece of acrylic lens, looks like. Get that delivered, delivered, delivered. There we go. Get that opening up. Get a good position. And I can see that's a six millimeter optic and look at that rex, it's got a good overlap, 360, so about a five millimeter rex. I like it, get that last haptic to open up here. There we go. Doesn't look like a torque lens. I don't know if you have to rotate in any particular position, but you, there it is, nicely opened up. So good overlap there. I'd go behind the optic. At 600 case, you can definitely go behind the optic. So going behind it, there you go, good job. Now you can try getting more of that stuff off the posterior lens capsule if you want. Again, the other option, you can just yag it later. If it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off, what can you do? But I'd, I'd, I'd be a little bit more persistent on that stuff. And then here we go, it looks pretty clean. And now what are we doing here? Well, the second instrument didn't quite catch what that was, but okay. 
Now seal up the incisions and call this done. So again, this is fantastic. For K600, I'm glad you submitted the video. You're doing a beautiful job. Your patient's obviously gonna be pretty happy here. Again, if you couldn't get that off, oh, here we go, second incision. There we go. Now, why would you do a second incision? Think about that. Well, obviously, for treatment of astigmatism, especially here at the end of the case. Notice how the second incision is opposite the main incision here. So fixing the eye, using that keratome, that's going to give you a good amount of flattening at that meridian. So I think patients who have this, I get about 0.75 diopters. Now, why would you do this instead of a torque lens? Well, sometimes you're in a situation where, let's say the patient can't afford a torque lens. You want to help them anyway. You say, look, I'm already there. Let me make a second incision. This is not a new technique, by the way. The paired incision for reduction of astigmatism has been described for 30 years or longer in our literature in ophthalmology. So it's not a new technique here. I find with these standard phaco incisions, you can get about 0.75, maybe even a diopter against the rule, maybe a little bit less with the rule. But those paired incisions, your main incision and the second incision are both on that same steep axis of the cornea. And now look at that, it looks great. But be, be sure to check all the incisions here at the end and make sure things are watertight and the patient's gonna be pretty happy. So leave a comment below, what do you think here for K600? I think it's pretty darn good. This is K600, K1000 is gonna be even better. Keep up the good work and thank you for watching. Again, leave your comments below. Let's all learn together here. Remember, check out Retina Rounds, our sister channel. It's so amazing. How many times do I gotta tell you? Check it out.